SpaceX's next massive vehicle Starship may start taking to the skies in earnest this summer. Most recently, SpaceX has filed a U.S. Federal Communications Commission permit request for the second test flight of Starship from Starbase, Texas. According to this, SpaceX is targeting a six-month window that opens on June 15th for the highly anticipated mission. This license is suggested for an experimental orbital demo and recovery test of the Starship test vehicle from Boca Chica, Texas. For the best case, a July or August launch of Starship IFT-2 is a huge possibility with these filings. Booster 9 should roll out in early June to the OLM and whichever ship SpaceX decides to launch atop for a full-stack Starship. This is the best case, however note that this is not the same as a launch license. It is a specific radio license for the test vehicles and does not indicate a change in status. After the explosion of the first orbital flight, SpaceX is under another FAA investigation. For reference, the FCC permit for Starship's first flight was filed two years ago on May 13th of 2021 for an operation start date of June 20th of 2021. It actually launched 22 months later on April 20th of 2023. This FCC license is necessary for SpaceX to receive telemetry data from the next Starship test during the orbital and booster stages of the flight. Telemetry is data transmitted by a spacecraft to Earth during flight, including information such as position and heading, systems operation, and so forth. In its application to the FCC for the permit, they also declared, This STA extends the information in previous grant 0145-EX-ST-2023 and is necessary to authorize Starship Test Flight 2 vehicle communications from the launch pad at Boca Chica, Texas and the experimental recovery operation following the Starship Test Vehicle demo launch. Trajectory data will be provided directly to NTIA, USAF and NASA. Launch Licensing Authority is the FAA Office of Commercial Space Transportation. This is definitely a new step forward for the Starship program. Now, back to reality at Starbase. Yesterday morning, SpaceX successfully transported two self-propelled modular transporters complete with counterweights to Massey's testing site. Mere minutes after 10 p.m. CST at the entrance of the launch pad parking lot, Starship's Ship 25, which was already set up on SPMTs, began its hour-long journey. It won't be long now before Ship 25 finishes its recertifying cryo and the question remains whether it will be be able to fly with Booster 9. Care to place your bets in the comments section? In other news, SpaceX has begun removing the damaged compressed tanks from the top of the bunker at the tank farm, while also installing steel plates under the launch mount foundation. Yesterday, the sixth rebar cage was also swung into position, showcasing the amazing speed at which SpaceX operates. Next, the first Vulcan rocket rolled back to the hangar for adjustments prior to test firing. Vulcan was filled with methane and liquid oxygen propellants at Cape Canaveral last week for a tanking test, but managers decided to move the rocket back inside a hangar for a few adjustments before proceeding with an engine test firing. A ULA spokesperson said the company's engineers collected excellent data during the May 12th tanking test, which mimicked a launch countdown with holds, readiness polls, and other milestones. Based on the test, there are several parameters that will be adjusted prior to conducting the flight readiness firing, the ULA spokesperson said in a statement. We are rolling back to the vertical integration facility where our access is better and the vehicle is protected to isolate and perform those adjustments. Riding a mobile launch platform, the Vulcan rocket rolled off the launch pad and back into the vertical integration facility, or VIF. On Monday, a journey on rail tracks stretching about a third of a mile. The same hangar and launch pad are used by ULA's Atlas V rocket, but the company built a new launch platform specifically designed for Vulcan. Tori Bruno, ULA's chief executive, said engineers will adjust a setting associated with ground hydraulic pressure, change the topping rate for liquid oxygen, and adjust the flow of purge and chill gases to the BE-4 engine igniters. All normal stuff, Bruno said, adding that the tanking test on May 12th was intended to uncover such issues. 
The Vulcan rocket sports a colorful paint job with a bright red flame emblazoned on the side of the 17.7 foot side or 5.4 meter first stage. For the tanking tests and the flight readiness firing, the Vulcan rocket is not fitted with any solid rocket boosters or a payload fairing. Once the test firing is complete, ULA will install two of the Northrop Grumman built solid fueled boosters and the payload shroud supplied by Beyond Gravity, formerly known as Ruag Space. The Vulcan rocket's inaugural flight will be the first, first launch to use new methane-fueled BE-4 engines from Blue Origin, founded by billionaire Jeff Bezos. At full throttle, each BE-4 engine can generate about 550,000 pounds of thrust. Two of them will power each Vulcan core stage with zero, two, four, or six solid rocket boosters to add thrust in the first couple minutes of flight. The Vulcan rocket Centaur upper stage, called the Centaur 5, is an upgrade to the upper stages currently flying on the ULA's Atlas V rocket. The Centaur V has a wider diameter to accommodate larger cryogenic hydrogen and oxygen propellant tanks, along with two Aerojet Rocketdyne RL-10 engines. The Centaur flying on the Atlas V rocket typically flies with a single engine. Once all of the Vulcan rocket configurations are operational, the new rocket will fully replace and grow the lift capability currently offered by all of ULA's rockets. The largest Vulcan rocket variant with a single core stage will have more payload lift capability than ULA's Delta IV Heavy, which has three liquid-fueled first-stage boosters connected together. And for our last bit of news today, there is a new ingenious plan that could save NASA's Hubble telescope. Indeed, NASA's Hubble Space Telescope is slowly falling to its retirement, but now a couple of startups have a solution that may just be crazy enough to work. The Tokyo-based AstroScale startup and California's momentous space have drafted a joint plan to save Hubble, which has been slowly sinking further into low Earth orbit since it was first launched 33 years ago. At the end of 2022, NASA issued a call for proposals from the commercial sector to help Hubble. Although SpaceX naturally is working with NASA on its own feasibility study to get the space telescope back into flying shape, Momentus and Astroscale's bold new proposal is very intriguing as well. Plan goes a little something like this. A non-crewed rocket would launch a water-propelled space tug thruster into low Earth orbit, which would then drag the Hubble up by some 31 miles. Then, after undocking, it'd remove any space junk that could mess with the telescope's new orbit. This collaboration is a big deal given that Momentus has already a space tug craft in the works and earlier this week announced its water-propelled system, which a spokesperson confirmed to online news sources would be used for the proposed Hubble mission should NASA choose to select the joint project. Astroscale comes in at the latter end of the proposal with a specialized space debris capture technique, which earlier this month had a nearly successful orbital test that was unfortunately foiled at the last minute due to some weird anomalies the Japanese company conceded in a press release. The currently untested and unproven nature of the startup's uncrewed and water-powered plan may well give NASA pause, especially considering that SpaceX has a substantial track record of pulling off tasks for the agency. But the company's plans novelty may, per a statement from the president of Astroscale's American operation, be the key selling point. These options, I've got to admit, seem pretty cool, if only NASA will give these startups the money for it. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you soon.